Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be learning about the OS module and some of the useful things that we can do with it. Now, the OS module allows us to interact with the underlying operating system in several different ways. Uh, so, for example, we can navigate the file system, uh, get file information, look up and change the environment variables, we can move files around, and all kinds of useful stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the things that we can do. Uh, so first of all, let's go ahead and import the OS module. Now this is a built-in module, so we don't have to install any third-party libraries or anything like that. Now, something useful when you're working with a new module, if you print out this built-in DIR function and pass in the module that you are working with, this will show us all of the attributes and methods that we have access to within this module. And you can see here that uh, with the OS module, there are plenty to choose from. Now, we're not going to be going over each and every one of these, uh, but we will take a look at the ones that I kind of use on a regular basis and also the ones that I consider to be some of the most useful. Okay, so for the first thing, let's just print out the current directory that we are in. Now, to do this, we can use os.getcwd, and that stands for Git Current Working Directory. And you can see here, whenever I print this out, it prints out that we are within this folder on the desktop called Module OS. So now what if we wanted to navigate to a new location on the file system? So let's say that we wanted to navigate to the desktop here. So if I go ahead and just copy this path, and this can be any path that you want, I'm going to do an os.chdir, and that stands for change directory, and I'm going to pass in the path as a string. So if I save that, and now I'm going to print out the current working directory after we change the directory. Now, if I run that, you can see that we were within this module folder, and then we navigated to the desktop. So now our current working directory is the desktop. Okay, so now I'm going to take out this top print statement here. Um, okay, so now let's see what files and folders are here on the desktop. Now to do this, we can use a method called listdir for list directory. Now you can pass a path into list directory, but by default it will list the files and the folders in the current directory, which is now our desktop since we changed directory up here on line four. So now if I run this, then we can see the files and folders that are on the desktop. Okay, so now what if we wanted to create a new folder on the desktop called, uh, let's say, OS Demo 2. So let me grab this and I'll just paste in OS Demo 2 here. So now let's say that we wanted to create a folder on the desktop with this name here. Now there are two different methods that we can use to do this. We have os.makeDir and we can just pass in that string there as an argument. And there is also os.makeDirs. Now, make dirs and make dir are pretty similar, but make dirs, if you want to create a directory that's a few levels deep, then make dirs will create all of the intermediate level directories that you need, and make dirs won't do that. Um, so, for example, here, if I wanted to do an OS demo and I wanted to do a subdirectory within here, let's say subdir1. Now, if I tried to run this, it's going to give us an error um, because this top level here doesn't exist yet. Now, if we wanted to do this with make dirs, then it will go ahead and just create that top level for us. So now I'm going to comment out the make dir code. Now, if I run that, you can see that it ran fine and we have this OS demo 2 here. And within that OS demo 2, it's also going to have this subdirectory 1. So whenever I'm creating directories, I usually use make dirs, even whenever I'm just making the top level directory, because I feel like it's easier if I want to, uh, you know, create a, a tree structure just to use this one function. Uh, but now let's say that we wanted to delete these folders. Now deleting folders is kind of the same deal. We have rmdir and we have remove dirs. So this is the same thing as make dir and make dirs. Uh, the rmdir 
will not remove the intermediate directories and remove DIRs will. Now I consider deleting directories recursively a little more dangerous than creating them recursively. So usually whenever I am deleting folders, I will use rmdir so that I can specifically delete the exact directory that I want removed. Um, but in this case, since we want this entire demo tree gone anyway, I'm just going to use rmdirs here on this OS demo 2 and if I run that, then we're still printing out our list directory down here and you can see that that OS demo 2 was deleted. Okay, now let's say that we want to rename a file or a folder. To do that, we can use os.rename. Um, so let's say that we want to rename this test.txt here. Um, let's just rename this to, let's see, demo.txt. So when you're renaming files, you want to pass in the original file name first and then the uh, name of the new file that you want. So if I save that and run it, now it's in a different order here, but you can see that now this demo.txt uh, is within the desktop here and not the test.txt. Okay, so now let's see how we can look at some information about our files. So let's say that we wanted to print out all the information about this demo.txt file. Now to do this, we can use os.stat, and I'm actually going to have to print this out. And for now, I'm going to comment out the list directory there, and I'm just going to print out this os.stat on the demo.txt file. Okay, so a few different things got printed out here, and a lot of this can look like gibberish, but uh, you can look up in the documentation online what all of this means. But a couple of useful ones that I usually use um, is we can see that we have the size here, so if I copy that, then I can just do uh, a dot with the attribute there, and I can print that out. So the size of that file is bytes, 20 bytes, and let's say, for example, that you wanted the last modification time, uh, that would be this M time right here. So if I printed out this modification time here, then you can see that it prints that out. Now that returns a timestamp, and sometimes people don't know how to get these timestamps in a human readable format. Uh, so if we want to view this in an actual date time format, then what we can do is we can do a from date time import date time and I'm just going to let's see I will save this as a variable here called mod time equals and then we'll just do a print and a date time dot from timestamp and we will pass in that mod time and if I save that and run it then you can see it prints out a human readable form of that modified time timestamp. And file information like that can be really useful, like if you're working with a web application that has a lot of files that have been updated or created recently, and you want to know exactly when that was, then uh, this is a good way that you can do that within Python. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this so far. Um, okay, so now let's say that we want to see the entire directory tree and files within the desktop. Now if you want to traverse the directory tree and print all of the directories and the files, then you can use the os.walk method. So os.walk uh, is a generator that yields a tuple of three values as it's walking the directory tree. Uh, so for each directory that it sees, it yields the directory path, the directories within that path, and the files within that path. Now I know that might sound a little confusing, so let's just go ahead and take a look at an example here. Um, so by default, this traverses from the top down. So if we wanted to start at the desktop, then what do, all we'd have to do here is, now remember this uh, yields a three value tuple, so this is why we're able to use this syntax. So the first value is dir path, and then the next value is the dir names within that path, and then the third value is the file names within that path. And we wanna traverse this directory tree starting at the desktop, so I could either uh, copy the desktop path here, or I could do an os.get current working directory 
the pass into os.walk. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass in the path as a string. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and print out all of these values from within the for loop here. But just so you guys don't have to watch me type, uh, I can just grab this from my snippets file and just paste this in here and indent that. So let me go ahead and run this and I'll show you what the walk method does. And it can be extremely useful. Um, so what we did here is it started at the desktop as our current path. And then it printed out all of the directories within the desktop and all of the files within the desktop. And now it goes down each of these directories one at a time. So now it goes into the demos folder and prints out all of the directories within the demo folder and all the files within that, within that path. And then it goes down into that subdirectory and prints all the directories and, the, and all the files. And it keeps doing this until it goes through the entire tree of all of the directories uh, and files on the root path, which we chose as the desktop. Now this can be extremely useful if, um, say that I had a file somewhere within one of the folders on my desktop, but I didn't remember exactly where it was. Then I could just use this os.walk method to go through and search through all of those files and folders on the desktop. Or like I was saying before, if you had a web application and you wanted to keep track of all of the file information within a certain directory structure, then you could just go through this os.walk method and go through all of the files and folders within your web, app web application and collect file information that way. So the os.walk method can be extremely useful for things like that. Um, okay, so now let's say that we want to access my home directory location by grabbing the home environment variable. Now we can get environment variables. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these lines here. Now we can get environment variables by accessing os.environ. Now if I was to print out the os.environ here, then it would print out all of my environment variables. But I have a lot of those, so let's just grab one. So let's say that I wanted to get my home environment variable, which will be the location of my uh, user's home directory. So let me just go ahead and print that out and run that. And you can see that it uh, captures my home directory there. Okay, so now let's say that I wanted to use this uh, path that it gave me with this os.get home. Let's say that I wanted to use that to create a new file within my home directory um, that I'll just go ahead and create a file called, let's see, test.txt. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna figure out when we're creating this file is what the path should be. So how can we combine uh, this path that we got from this home directory here and our file name into a single path for this new file? Um, now, one thing that some people try is to just concatenate these. So let's say that I did a file path equal to uh, the location of this home directory plus text.txt. Now, the problem with doing it this way is that it is, it's hard to remember if all of these slashes are in the, in the uh, correct positions or whether or not you could be missing a slash. So for example, if I print out this file path that we just created, then you can see that we're missing a slash here. And sometimes it's easy to forget that. And some paths come with the slashes at the end and you can double slashes and things like that. So in order to prevent this guesswork, we can use the os.path module. So the os.path module has a lot of useful methods for working with paths, but the one that we're gonna use in this situation to combine the home directory with the file name is os.path.join. Now what this does is it just joins two paths together and it takes away that guesswork that we were just talking about. So here I'm gonna do an os.path.join and this takes in two arguments here. So we're gonna have this home path be one argument and then this test.txt as the other one. So if I save that, and I'm just gonna comment out that print statement. Now if I save that and run it, then you can see that we have a full path of this file name with the slash in the correct location. 
So that takes all of the guesswork out of creating those paths and whether or not you need to add a slash in a certain location or not. Um, so you can see that it combined those and gave us the path that we were hoping for. Now that's extremely useful again if you're you know, reading and writing a bunch of files to different locations and want to make sure that those paths are all created properly, then you can go ahead and use that os.path.join and know that it's doing it correctly. So now if we wanted to actually go ahead and create that file, then we could just do a with open file path and then we could do an as f and write it and do, you know, an f dot write. But I'm not going to actually create that file right now. Um, I will go into uh, file creations and working with files in a later video. But for now, let's go ahead and keep looking at some of the other useful methods that we have available here in, uh, in os.path. So using this os.path, uh, it also has a few other useful methods that we can use here. So we can do an os.path.base name. And what this will do is it will grab the file name of any path that we're working on. And this doesn't have to be a real path. So for example here, this path that I'm typing in doesn't exist, this temporary text.txt. Um, so let me go ahead and print out what this gives us. So if I print that out, you can see that the base name of this entire path is just text.txt. Now, if I only wanted the directory name of that path, then instead of base name, I could type in dir name and print that out, and you can see that it gives me temp. Now, if I wanted both of those, then I could use split, and if I print that out, you can see that it gives me the directory name first and the base name second. So also using os.path, you can check if a path exists. So like I said before, this was a fake path that doesn't exist. So if I want to check the existence, I can do os.path.exists. And if I save that and run it, you can see that that is false because this path actually doesn't exist on the file system. Now, two more methods that I use a lot. Uh, if you did have a path that exists on the file system, then you, sometimes uh, temporary files might just be named without an extension, so they might look something like this. If you want to check if something is a directory or a file, then you can do os.path.isdir, and it will return true if it's a directory. And you can do os.path.isfile, and it will return true if it is a file. Now, one more useful function that I end up using a lot is one called split ext. Now what this will do is it will split the file root and the extension, or I should say the root of the path and the extension. So if I was to save this and run it, you can see that here we have this slash temp slash text test, and for the second value we just have the extension dot t, uh, txt. Now this is a lot easier than trying to parse out the extension using uh, string slicing or things like that. It's a lot easier just to split it off and then take the first value if you want the file name without the extension. So that is a method that I end up using a lot for file manipulation. Now just like we did with the OS module, if you want to see everything that is available within the, this os.path module, um, then you can also print out the DIR of that, and you can see some of these that we've already worked with. So we have dir name, exist, is dir, is file, and things like that. But there's a lot more useful information here as well. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this overview of the OS module. Now this module has a ton of functionality packed into it, and we didn't get to go over everything that it can do, uh, but these are the methods that I use most often and the ones that I find most useful. So hopefully this video will give you some ideas for how you can use the OS module in your own projects. Uh, if you do have any questions, just feel free to ask in the comment section below, uh, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Um, be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.